what, what happens to me when I have lost oxygen out of my environment? I was in a gate waiting area before going down to Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm uh, sitting there kind of looking at the whole Paralympic team, all my new Paralympic team members. And I wasn't in the best mindset of the day because I really wanted to be on the Olympic team, not the Paralympic team. I'm like, all I could see were people with disabilities. They were blind, paralyzed, uh, people of little stature, short, um, dwarfism. They were individuals uh, that had cerebral palsy and they were amputees like myself. I'm like, what's the value? What's the benefit of being on this team? There's a gentleman I was sitting next to, he's in a beautiful three-piece Armani suit, he's got gator skin shoes on, he's pulling this Louis Vuitton bag, and he's talking so loud on his cell phone, I just wanted to reach out and touch him. <laughs> Kept my hands to myself. What's the value, what's the benefit of being on this team? The gate agent, she gets up to the lectern with herself and she says, ladies and gentlemen, flight number 300 is now ready for passenger boarding. Will everyone who needs a little bit more time and assistance please get up and board the aircraft at this time? 60 of my Paralympic teammates and I got up and started walking down the jet bridge. I said, oh, ho, benefit number one. <laughs> That's a perk. I get on board the aircraft, I go back, I sit down at the 17th row, 17F, I like the window seat, and I begin to watch this amazing spectacle of all my team members coming on board the aircraft. The blind, they're being led on by the person that's in front of them. Uh, those that are in wheelchairs, that are uh, spinal cord injured, they're being led on in aisle chairs. Those with cerebral palsy, they are using the backs of the chairs to kind of get to their seats. And then I see Tree. Now Tree is on our wheelchair basketball team. He's a double leg amputee and he's walking on his artificial legs. And Tree stands kind of like uh, uh, our, 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 our speaker that was out here, <laughs> his double legs. He gets on board the aircraft. He's ducking on the exit sign because he stands six feet, eight inches tall. But I get it, Tree can be a tree at six, eight or a stump at four, three depending upon which legs he picks out of the closet in the morning time. So he ducks underneath the exit sign, he stops at seat 7C, pops his artificial legs off, hands them to the flight attendant, who places those legs in the overhead bin. But I get it, 17F, benefit number two. More leg room, absolutely. <laughs> Y'all are sick. <laughs> All right, so, so now the flight attendant goes to Tree, says to Tree, can I help you, sir, with any more time and attention? Can I help you with anything else? And Tree, Tree says, no, ma'am, I'm good, I'm good. And off she walks back through the red curtains to bring all the tabs on board the aircraft. Tabs. Anybody guess? No, that wasn't it. And I didn't even hear it, so it doesn't really matter. Tabs, temporarily able-bodied individuals. Keep living. <laughs> okay, that was a morbid joke. They, she goes out to get all of them on board the aircraft. Tree now being 4'3", he jumps up into a seat. He takes those long basketball arms, hoists himself up to the overhead bin. He climbs in, lays prone next to his legs, <laughs> closes the bin door. 17F. <laughs> I catch out with Amy, my swim teammate. Amy puts her head down. To, turns beet red, twirls her thumbs like they have done this a thousand times before. So I am like on the edge of my seat, who's gonna sit in that seventh row? And we got tabs going to the back of the plane, they're spitting out side to side, window seats, exit seats, all these things are, that they're, all the coveted seats that they'll have on the aircraft. And then we have our winner, Mr. Armani suit. Still pulling that Louis Vuitton bag still loud on that cell phone, stops at the seventh row, realizes his attache will not fit underneath the seat back pocket in front of him. So we must go to the overhead bin where our friend Tree has been lying prone for the last five minutes. And when he goes to lift that latch, <laughs> don't get ahead of me, y'all. <laughs> he goes to boom out Tree Pops, jumps just like you did, ma'am. Armani does a Carl Lewis long jump from the seventh row all the way back to the 17th row I'm at, slips on those gators. I catch eyes back with Amy. Amy says, oh, that's pretty good, John. Last guy on the radio made it to row number 10. That is a new world record. <laughs> so Armani, as I'm cracking up, goes back up to the seventh row, 
where, no joke, Tree has his hand on his chin, his little nubby leg things are crossed. He says, I'm sorry, sir, but this overhead bin space has been filled. <laughs> so there I am in 17, I'm cracking up. I've never seen anything like this before in my life. And then I it took myself back out to 15 minutes earlier, where I was in the gate waiting area, wanted to be on the Olympic team, not the Paralympic team. It looked like I was going to have a lot more fun on the Paralympic team than I ever was going to have on the Olympic team. But I started understanding and, and understanding how I was kind of losing oxygen out of my environment. Tree was filling up, third lesson, Tree was filling up as his full authentic self despite how I was showing up for him. How do we get that confidence? How do we have that much of a resolve, a reckoning that we can have with ourselves and say my life is how I determine it to be and not be dictated by the environments that are around it. I will bring oxygen into my environment for myself and for my teams.